have the honor today of doing an artist interview with Sha Wong. This is Sha. She is actually one of our very influential artists this year. She will be receiving that 2023 award at our ceremony at Rootstock in August, August 10th. So we're very excited to honor you there as well. We absolutely love your artwork. Thank you so much, Shannon. <laughs> so welcome. So tell us a little bit about you. I understand you recently took a trip to Italy. That's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I personally, I work uh, at Kansas State University. Um, in our daily time, I teach Chinese and Asian studies, and that's my full-time job. But love is uh, always my passion. And um, yeah, recently we went to France and uh, Italy, and I always dream of um, traveling in Europe because they, they're so rich in culture mm -hmm. and art and history, right? And I want so many museums, art museums in France, in Paris, uh, and also visit a lot of uh, beautiful paintings, famous paintings like Van Gogh's Starry Light and uh, Monet's paintings, the uh, Lily Ponds, oh, yeah. the whole room, yeah, very beautiful. And when we went to Italy, uh, we went to uh, Florence and the Rome, and there's art everywhere. So in every corner you can find history and art. And even the smallest community church have beautiful, gorgeous paintings. Um, and it's amazing to see that how art can be really, really part of the life. Did you have a chance to visit the Louvre? Oh yeah, of course. Louvre is a must. <laughs> right. That is on my to-do list. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> if I had more time, I would spend a whole week there, like just wandering around. And there are so many beautiful works there. And uh, yeah, yeah, we really, really enjoy Louvre. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about. So you work full time at Kennesaw State, State University, University, which is an awesome school. Yeah. Um, and so that's your full-time job, but you said art has always been a passion. So tell us a little bit about how you started getting into your own art. Mm -hmm. Where did you get your motivation? How did, what's your story there? Mm -hmm. So I remember when I was very young, elementary school, I was always drawn to art and I loved like painting drawing classes. And I remember I was one of the top students, like the teacher's favorite students in the class. Uh, but somehow when I grew up, I didn't get a chance to really dig into this field deeply or have professional training. Um, but I always, I feel I like always drawn to it. And then in 2019, I met a friend whose name is Ying, and she's an art lover. And she just told me that she knows that I'm creative. She knows that I, I write poetry and I, I like creation. And so she just told me that, Sha, I think you should try art. You should try painting. And you will love it. And it will be another outlet for you. And I, will, I said, okay. Why not? <laughs> and that's that's how I began. So at the very beginning, uh, another friend of mine, uh, Catherine, and we, we think that maybe we, we'll, we'll take a class. Okay, we'll take a watercolor class and enroll for that. But um, fortunately, that class didn't make it because of the low enrollment. And then we'll say, okay, so maybe we should just uh, begin by ourselves. You know. So every Tuesday, she came to my place and we have dinner together and we chit chat and we paint just following the YouTube uh, video demo that we can find online right. and we enjoy it so much although the first uh, several paintings are awful <laughs> it's, it's awful but we just enjoy it and then more and more uh, friends are joining later and the group is growing and uh, um, when pandemic hit uh, we moved the group online and, uh, and more people joining, the whole group flourished um, and it became a kind of support group. You know, because during the pandemic, it's hard, life is hard, people feel isolated from each other and uh, people are, like, normal life is not possible. And that specific kind of strange that people feel naturally like we want to connect and art become a kind of medium or bridge that connect with the whole group. Mm -hmm. 
and the group flourish and grows and, and then we did our first uh, um, group uh, exhibit, I think, uh, during the pandemic. <laughs> and then this November, November we're going to do our second group exhibit in the art place, Marega. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we really look forward to it. So that's kind of my story. So for really seriously into art, that beginning from 2019, but I always feel drawn to it, attracted to it. Yeah. I think the pandemic brought a lot of artists out. Yeah, and people do kind of yeah. have that inner artist. Yeah. Um, but art is definitely a way to connect and to communicate. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, isolation is is it's just not a good thing. God did not make us to be isolated. We need that connection. And so art has always been, the arts, performing arts, visual arts, has always been a good way to connect. So tell us a little bit about your process. So how do you decide what you want to paint and what medium you want to use? Okay. And what are what's some of your process that goes into creating a painting? Mm. So I, my first and major medium, I, I should say it's watercolor. Um, I first chose it maybe because it's similar, it's more similar to traditional Chinese painting, the wash and the ink painting, the style and the, the control of the water and fluidity. So I think that could be the reason. Um, and later when I practice it more, I, I love it more. So a lot of people think that watercolor is a hard medium. And some of them told me that they think it's the hardest. <laughs> so, I have heard that. Yeah. So, I have not attempted watercolors. Yeah. Try it. You, you will like it. And it's uh, very hard to control it uh, because the fluid fluidity, right? And it's unforgiveness. And when you make a mistake, when accidents happen, it's very hard to reverse it or correct it. It's not like acrylic or oil. You can kind of correct it very easily. So watercolor happens just in that instant, that moment, and uh, it's hard to come back and <laughs> correct it. Yeah. But I, I just love it because when, when you're doing watercolor, you have to uh, follow the flow sometimes. You have to learn to follow the flow and you have to dance on the line between control and uh, let it go. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of philosophy, I think, for life too. So I, I love it. I, I used to be a person who always made plan and want to control everything. And I think practice watercolor helped me to practice that kind of philosophy, following the flow. Sometimes let it go, and sometimes you need some control when you're doing art, but how to keep a good balance and dance with it. And accept that mistakes and accidents happen inevitably. Yes, and that's <laughs> and, okay. Yeah, that's okay. And you have to accept it and sometimes we can create something beautiful, exciting, or unexpected out of mistakes and accidents. Yeah. So that's the reason I love it. So now I think I begin to explore different mediums, uh, like acrylics and ink, and sometimes I combine them um, to create some different effects and the more I learn about different medium, I feel that they're like people. Like each medium have different characters, and I like to know them personally. And just you know, it's it's a it's a beautiful experience for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you working with acrylics or oils some as well? Mm -hmm. and no, no, I'm actually uh, I think in uh, the recent four. Three paintings. I, I'm using acrylic and try to explore that medium a little bit more. And it's surprisingly, I think it's more versatile medium than I expected because sometimes you can use it with more water and more more flow, and sometimes you can create texture with it, like with light, right? Like a little bit like oil sometimes. So so I like the, the I like its characters more now. <laughs> You have to get to know it. Uh, you have to get to know it like person. My main thing were content. Uh, I, I think I draw most of my inspiration from nature 
and my main theme are landscapes like plants, uh, flowers. I'm, I'm trying doing more experience uh, recently with dead flowers. <laughs> so, so uh, with dead flowers? Dead flowers, yes. So tell me about that. I love, I think, when we're talking about like uh, getting old and uh, death, that's the topic that a lot of people may want to avoid. But I always feel, maybe I'm an old soul, <laughs> I always feel that their beauty uh, in, 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 the, in, in age, in ages, and uh, in, even in death, um, it's, it's very quiet, peaceful beauty, embodied the whole, I mean, the, the memory and time, and in the whole life. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just very hard to explain. I was drawn to the images of the flowers, and um, I think they carry that, still carry the beauty and the strength, um, even in the last minute. Yeah. So that's one of the small topics I want to explore a little bit more recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's a lot of beauty just in how you're describing that. Yeah. Thank you. And so, and what I hear is kind of each flower, I mean, just like people, we all have kind of our story. Mm -hmm. And then even in those last few minutes, the story continues. And even after death, our story can continue. Our legacy. I hope that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I believe so. Yeah. Because uh, you, your legacy, you're right, people. The legacy could be different things. It could be the art you created, it could be the people you influence. Mm -hmm. right? So it's still there mm -hmm. in some way. I truly believe that we plant seeds as we go along. Mm -hmm. And we may not see those seeds grow, but at some point in time they grow. So we plant seeds in other people's lives. Either so. through art, through our own integrity, our own relationships. And then those can grow. And they'll continue to grow throughout time. Yeah. So it's really a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so you mentioned inks and some of the historical ink and some of the ink, the art that used more of the inks. Do you feel like you will ever experiment with ink? Yeah, uh, I think the like ancient uh, Chinese traditional Chinese painting, you they actually doesn't use a lot of color. So it's mostly black and white or different grades of black and gray. They use ink as a, as a main medium and with different uh, proportion of water to create uh, different shades and flowing and very, very beautiful. And, but it's a very hard, very hard medium because the paper that uh, traditional Chinese painting use is rice paper. So it's even harder than watercolor. <laughs> More flow, <laughs> more out of control, and uh, um, more uh, difficulties, I think. But but I do want to try that. That's maybe one of the tasks that in my mind that I will try that uh, with brushes, no pressure. But I'll try it anyway and see. Yeah, see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. And I always love black and white. I think they have some unique beauty just in the simplicity. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And if you like a challenge and you enjoy challenging yourself and learning and continuing to learn, that sounds like a, a good avenue to challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. So if I'm afraid of watercolors, I probably would definitely do <laughs> Try, try. But maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. So you're primarily drawn to nature mm -hmm. and landscapes and, and florals. Do you see yourself ever branching out and, and challenging yourself with some um, abstract styles mm. or um, architectural mm. art? Good question. Actually, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So for me, I like certain types of abstract. So I, I like to call it maybe not abstract, uh, but more like imagerism. So it's like you still can see the some images there, so some something. It's not completely abstract, and uh, so for for some paintings, I cannot feel collected because it's too abstract. I think <laughs> so. It's not my thing, but uh, I 
I've seen some uh, works uh, still with images, not like real world image, but it carries the the like the physicists. I don't know if the metaphor is easy <laughs> to understand, but there are images, uh, the physicists of image inside, and you can still touch it in some way and communicate with it, but it's not like the reality. Okay. So I like that kind of abstract, and <laughs> maybe I'll try that later someday. And uh, architecture is always hard, in my opinion, but since I've traveled in Europe and I took a lot of pictures of beautiful architectures, and I'm, 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 I think I'm ready to try sometimes, but I need to learn a little bit the basic techniques and then try that. Yeah. I still feel that my most interest are in living beings like uh, trees, you know, flowers, because I feel that like they carry the beauty and it's part of it's like every human being, it's part of the universe, and each each creature or living being has its own unique beauty and I would like to reflect it in my own way. I, I usually avoid depicting in a very realistic way because I think photos can do the job mm -hmm. now. So when I create, I like to just use the outside world uh, as a font to um, express my own inner world. Um, and it's like a little bit like, like a bridge. So my work is more like a, a byproduct of my interaction with the world outside. Good. And so, even with the architecture, it sounds like if you were, when you try that, it won't be like that photo perfect mm -hmm. painting of that beautiful building. No, because photo can do a better job than me if I just want to do like every details, right? So, I feel that the, in, in nowadays, I think the, the, the art, the function or the purpose of the art, in, in the past, when, when photograph, before photograph, was invented, I mean, people of course used it to capture reality, that makes sense, but now we have all this modern technology and I think art is more like creation, so you bring out something uh, out, 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 out of your own, own inner world mm -hmm. um, and, and it's, it's, it's a bridge that's um, kind of demonstrating your own inner world. And when I tell people all the time that most artists will paint from the heart, and so that's what I hear. Mm -hmm. You're adding a piece of your own inner heart to what you're painting, and so you're sharing with the world a small piece of your of your vulnerability, mm -hmm. of your heart, of your soul. And that, from an appraisal standpoint, is what makes, because a lot of artists could paint the same building. Mm -hmm. But every painting is going to be different because they're putting a personal piece of themselves to it. And I, so I agree. I think that that's the message. And I think that's what most artists are trying to do is kind of get what's in here onto there. Mm -hmm. And that can feel risky. It can feel scary because then the viewer has an opinion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're afraid of those opinions. But to push yourself to express yourself, mm -hmm. there's fulfillment in that. When I really think about this question, I think it's a very good question. So I, I, I usually do not set up goals like I'm gonna, like, get into some exhibit or I'm gonna be famous, <laughs> more famous, or I'm gonna win a award. I, I need to ask this question about like what is the purpose? What I originally doing art, right? So when I'm doing art. I feel the uh, joy of uh, expression, like e expressing my world and, and communicating with people, sharing, sharing my world. And also, um, I think when people see them, they say that, oh, that's beautiful. And they see beauty, tranquility, or strength in my piece of art, like they see in some like living beings in the world, like a little flower or a tree. Uh, or lake, and they, they see the beauty. They see the beauty of each uh, unique uh, living beings in the world. 
And at the same time, I think it, I hope that we kind of remind them too, because everybody's part of the uterus, right? I think, I hope you will remind them too about their own beauty and the strength, um, because that's, that's important. And I also hope that, I believe art uh, can, can help to heal and collect the world. So I feel that now we, we live in a very divisive world. Um, and I think if people can uh, be collected with art, um, like my little art group is doing, and that would be wonderful. So as long as I think um, the audience can, can see the beauty of my work, and uh, will be inspired maybe to share or even create uh, their own art, um, I will be happy. So I think that's the, the ultimate goal of creating, bring something beautiful to the world and sharing, and then bring more people to join this creation process and enjoy it so that, so that the whole world is more beautiful and the peaceful and the uh, you know more collections, um, then I'll be I'll be happy. It's very hard for me to think that I, I will set up the goals to like get into exhibits or yeah win awards, that kind of thing. Um, I think it's 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 important for some artists um, when you're going along the road to become to more professional become a more professional artist, but uh, I think ultimately uh, I hope that the, the audience um, can enjoy my art more. So I guess exposure <laughs> and get more people know my work and enjoy my work and, and inspire them to uh, create and enjoy the creation. Yeah, then I'll be happy. <laughs> That is actually awesome. Everything we do in life is tied to a purpose, or there should be purpose. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the purpose rather than the checkoff list, you know, which mm -hmm. is kind of how I see getting into this exhibit or accomplishing this or accomplishing that, um, purpose is motivational. And when we motivate others, that is part of planting seeds and it pays it forward. And it kind of takes on its own growth. And so if art is motivating and purposeful to bring about more beauty in a broken world, mm -hmm. or to bring about more harmony and connection in a disconnected world, I mean, that's almost the perfect goal. If perfection existed, I would say that's the perfect goal. Oh, thank you. That, I think, is just yeah. so, it has so much more value than some of the other goals that we could have. And so I absolutely admire that. Thank you. So what else would you like for our viewers or the art world to know about you? Mm, about me, myself? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to close us out with? Uh, anything at all, anything that you would want people to know. Okay. Um, I love creation. And I enjoy creation, so I want to just encourage everyone, <laughs> try. <laughs> uh, don't be afraid and don't, don't get nervous and there's no pressure. Just try to express yourself in a more creative way and the sharing and, and I think you will love it. Just like my friend even told me in 2019, you've got to try it and uh, I believe you will love it. <laughs> And you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations again on being one of our 2023 VIA artists. We are looking forward to that. And um, we look forward to more paintings and more exhibits and more relationship with you as well. So thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you, John. Thank you for this. Is <laughs>